Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Granny Square bookmark. And this is the Granny Square bookmark here. The Granny Square uh, pattern is such a timeless and classic pattern. Uh, it's used in a variety of projects from blankets to accessories to clothing. And so today I have um, brought to you uh, my design of the Granny Square bookmark because I love to read and I love to have a little handmade accessory to go along with my reading. So this is it here. I have made it with a small amount of Patton's um, Grace yarn and this is a 100% mercerized cotton. It's uh, a lightweight yarn so if you're looking on the yarn package of your own skein of yarn it has a number three on it. You're going to need approximately 10 yards of each color that you choose. And uh, these are the ones that I've chosen today. So you're going to need approximately 10 yards. If you choose to add a tassel, you may need a little bit more of the color that you choose to make that tassel with. As well, you're going to use a four millimeter crochet hook and you're going to need a pair of scissors and as well a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. The pattern, the written pattern, can be found for free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and I will link that in the video notes uh, of this tutorial here for you. As well, while you're here, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I like to offer you free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials weekly. Thank you so much for joining me. So as mentioned, for this pattern, you're going to need three different colors. And in the pattern, the written pattern, I have labeled the colors as A, B, and C. Now, uh, for the video tutorial here, the color A will be this blue, the darker blue, which is shown here on the outline. Color B is this lighter colored blue. And color C is this gray color. So these are the colors that I'll be working with today in this video. To begin your pattern, you are going to take your color C, which is my silver that I have here, and uh, each of these squares is made separately and then joined together in the end. So we're going to be, and each square has three rounds in it. So we're going to begin by making just one of these granny squares. So beginning with your color C, you are going to start by making a magic ring or else you're going to start by chaining three. So you can do either or whatever you're most comfortable with. In the video I'm going to do uh, my version of a magic ring where I just simply twist it and I kind of wrap the yarn around and then I pull up a loop. So it's kind of like a loose slip knot. And then I insert my hook in that little loop that I've pulled up. And then very carefully holding on to the rest of the loop, I am going to begin. The first thing you're going to do when round one is you're going to begin by chaining three. One, two, three. Next, you will work three double crochet stitches into the center of your ring. There's one. two, and three. For the purposes of this pattern, your chain three at the beginning of each round will always count as a double crochet stitch. I'm just going to pull my magic ring a little bit tighter so it's not as flimsy. After you double crochet three into the ring, you will chain two. Next, work four double crochet stitches into the center of your ring. One, two, three, and four. Chain two. You will now repeat that twice more. So you're going to repeat four double crochet into the center of your ring, followed by a chain 
two. And you're going to do that two more times. So four double crochet. One, two, three, and four. Chain two, four more double crochet into the center of your ring. And chain two. Now at this point, if you have made a magic ring, you are going to pull your magic ring as tight as you possibly can. Once you have come back to your chain three, remembering that it always counts as a stitch, you are going to join with a slip stitch in the top of that chain three. At this time, you are going to change colors. So you can clip that color C, and you're going to change to color B. To change with color B, I simply just pull it through, and then I'll pull the color C tight. Just like that. Now you are going to turn your work and get ready to work round two. For round two, you now have the wrong side facing. You're going to begin round two by chaining three. One, two, three. You will now work three double crochet stitches into that chain two space. One, two, and three. Chain two. And now work four double crochet stitches into the same chain two space. So all of these stitches are being worked into that same space. One, two, three, four. Now skip the next four double crochet stitches and work four double crochet stitches, chain two, and four more double crochet stitches into the next chain two space. Four double crochet stitches. Chain two, followed by four more double crochet stitches all into the same space. You are now going to repeat that four double crochet stitches, chain two, and four double crochet stitches twice more. So you're going to repeat those clusters in each of your last two chain two spaces, and then you will join with a slip stitch in your first beginning chain three. I've worked all the way around. I'm now back at my chain three where I am joining with a slip stitch in the top of that chain three. And then at the end of round two, I am now going to switch to color A. So I can clip off, leaving a bit of a tail because we'll weave it in after. Clip off my color B. And now taking your color A, you're just going to join by pulling a loop through. Then I like to pull my color B tighter once again. At the end of this round, you will not turn your work. For round three, with color A, you are going to chain one, and you're going to single crochet in the same stitch as you joined in, and in each of the next three stitches. So in each double crochet stitch. Now, 
when you come to your chain two space, you will work three single crochet stitches in your chain two. Work one single crochet stitch in each stitch in each double crochet all the way across. You'll have a total of eight. And work three single crochet stitches in your chain two space. You are going to repeat that all the way around. And when you come back to your beginning stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch. When you come back to your first single crochet stitch, you will join with a slip stitch in that first stitch, and you are now going to fasten off your work. This is the end, and you're going to go and weave in your ends, of course. So this is the end of round three. At the end of this round, you're going to weave in your ends and finish off your square. And then you're going to proceed by repeating those rounds one to three, so making three more granny squares. You want to have a total of four. Of course, if you would like your bookmark shorter or longer, then you may um, do less or do more of your granny squares. This uh, one is approximately 9.5 inches long. Okay, so you can decide how many squares you would like. The pattern calls for three more of these granny squares. So once you have finished and once you have woven in all your ends, come back here and I will show you how to crochet them together and work a, a simple edging. Okay, so once you have worked your four granny squares, you're going to go ahead and you're going to begin to join them together uh, in a line to make your bookmark. How I like to do that is by taking the two right sides of your granny square and you're going to face put them down together. So you're going to have two wrong sides facing. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to take the color yarn of your choosing. I am uh, using my color A here. And you're going to find your corner stitch of the first square and that back loop. And so the back loop is going to be the stitch that's uh, the loop that's closest to you. So if I take a look at the top of my granny square here, I'm finding that middle stitch, which is this one right here. I'm looking up at the top and I'm going to work in the back loop. So this one that is closest to me, I'm just going to insert my hook through that. I am then going to find the center of my corner stitches on the opposite uh, square, which is right here. And again, I'm going to insert my ho hook working through the back loop of that square only. Okay, so you're going to have two loops on your hook there. You're going to work through both thicknesses and both of them should be the back loops of each square. You're then going to take your yarn and you're just going to join it with a slip stitch to that corner. Once you've joined it with a slip stitch, you're going to place one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across, always working through those back loops. So in that first one where you're joined, insert your hook through the two back loops and work your single crochet stitch. Now you're going to go to the next one again, the back loop of the square in front of you. So that's the closest loop to you. And then on the other one, again, working it through the back loop only of that square. And work your single crochet stitch. So do that all the way across until you come back uh, or come across to the next corner stitch. And after you have done that, you are going to fasten off and you're going to weave in your ends. And then you're going to repeat that process for each of the other squares until they are all joined together. So I will just finish working across here and then I'll show you how to make the edging. Now for my edging, once you have joined your final square, you can either fasten off if you would like and rejoin your yarn wherever uh, you so desire, but um, 
because I'm not a huge fan of weaving in ends, <laughs> I will show you how I do. I just continue working around uh, the edging in a single crochet fashion, which I am almost ready to show you. One more stitch should do it. Through those back loops. And now I have joined all four. I haven't fastened off yet, and I've joined all four granny squares together. Once you have come to that final one that you've joined together, instead of fastening off, all I did was I left um, my yarn and hook attached. I simply brought my hook to the front, so now right side facing, and I insert my hook in between the two rows there. So I just kind of make my own space, insert my hook there between my two granny squares and work one single crochet. I'm now going to continue working one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around, working three single crochet stitches in each corner stitch. Okay, so you're going to work and if you decided to fasten off and rejoin your yarn, that's all you're going to do is simply work one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around, and then work one, uh, three single crochet stitches in each corner. Now when I come to the place here where I have joined my squares together, I like to work one more single crochet in between those two blocks. It just kind of keeps it from bunching and spreads it out a little bit more. Okay, so work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around, three single crochets in each corner. Uh, you'll join with a slip stitch at the end, and then I will show you how to make your tassel embellishment. Okay, so now I have worked my one round of single crochet edging all the way back around. I have fa uh, joined it together with, in the, with a slip stitch in the first stitch, and I've woven on all of my ends. So now I have... Uh, a beautiful granny square bookmark. Now if you would like you're welcome to leave it as is or on mine here you can see that I've added a tassel embellishment to the end. So to make my tassel what I did was I cut about 10 strands of my yarn, color of your choice, I used my color A uh, and each strand is about 13 inches long and it really depends, it's your own personal preference on how long you would like to make your tassel. Remember that you're going to be folding these uh, strands in half, so you're going to want to make them long enough so that you're able to do that and still have the length that you want. Okay, so I've cut 10 pieces, each piece is about 13 inches long, then I'm going to go to the bottom of my bookmark. And I'm going to find sort of my center stitch and I kind of went into um, not through the top two loops because I like my tassel to be quite secure so I stick it through right in between a couple of the single crochet stitches. Just stick your crochet hook through there. Then I simply wrap all ten of those strands around and very carefully just kind of wiggled it through and pulled it out the other side. Make sure all 10 strands come through. I don't want to pull them through all the way. Just going to take my hook out there. Okay, so you've pulled all 10 strands through and you're going to kind of even them out because you want your tassel to be the same length all the way around. I did trim mine at the end um, to uh, even off these ends. But uh, so I'll, all I've done is I've pulled it through about halfway and now they'll have 20 strands through the bottom of your ta uh, at the bottom of your tassel altogether. I then took another piece again, about 13 inches long. You want it to be about the same length, and I cut it off. And then to the bottom of my tassel, right up at the top of it, I simply tie my strands together. So I laid my string underneath. And I just tie a quick knot to make it tight, just like that. You can see it tightening. Then I wrapped 
my two pieces around back and back up to the front and I did that again. I just really like to make sure that uh, it's a nice tight knot. Okay, wrap it around. I do it three or four times. Again, tie another knot and this time if you wanted to, if you're feeling happy with it, you can tie a secured knot in it. Just like that. I then took my yarn needle and I threaded it through the middle. Just lost my yarn needle here. There we go. I took my yarn needle and I took those two ends that I tied. Try the other one just so I can show you. <laughs> there we go. And then I just kind of tucked it down in through the center of where I tied it. Pulled it through and long. Let's see if I can get this one through my needle. There we go. Did the same for this one. And then I don't cut them short. I just leave them long so they're coming out through the bottom of the tassel. It just kind of tidies it up a little bit. And then I set it aside and then decided on the length that I was happy with and just trimmed my ends so that they were all even. And there you have it. That is the end of your granny square bookmark. Thank you so much for joining me today on this tutorial. Uh, Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, be sure to visit again soon. Until then, happy crocheting and happy reading. Bye.